People often ask me about the youth system at Manchester United, the strength or weakness of that famed system, a system which has produced some of Manchester United's greatest ever teams, which has helped Manchester United get out of some of the darkest moments in the club's history. We know the Busby Babes, we know the class of 92, but what's the situation like in 2024? And maybe people ask me because in 2015, I wrote a very critical article of the youth system at Manchester United and I didn't take any joy in writing that. It's just that I had multiple sources coming to me and telling me their concerns and I believed them. I knew who they were, I knew what their involvement was or had been and I felt, having spoke to them, that United were falling behind. Falling behind Liverpool, falling behind Manchester City. There was a touch of arrogance about Manchester United's approach. They felt that the badge alone could bring players into the club because that's what had happened previously. But there were other factors, meaning that wasn't happening. Money was one of them, believe it or not. And facilities was another. City built a new training ground with far superior facilities to what United had at Carrington. And long gone were the days when Sir Alex Ferguson said to Brian Kidd, get the best kids from Manchester, from Greater Manchester, and get them in here. And Kiddo did that. I spoke to Kiddo about this last night at Old Trafford. And that meant that players like Paul Scholes and the Neville brothers came into Manchester United. Ryan Giggs was brought in, Ryan Wilson as he was then. And we saw what a success these players were, Nicky Buck was another one, there were several more. But by 2015, yeah, there were still some great players in that system. Indeed, Marcus Rashford made his debut within a year of that. There were some great people in that system as well, and still are. There's people who've been in that system for 20, 30 years. People who are fantastic developers of youth. People who kids really look up to and are inspired by. And there's a problem with the youth system in so much as people just judge it off results or off the number of debuts made. And that's not always accurate either, it's far from accurate. So we know that statistic that every single squad since 1937 has had a player from the academy system. And that is fantastic. And even this season, I think 24% of Manchester United's minutes in matches have been given to teenagers. That's a really nice statistic as well. And we've seen players come through, most notably, uh, Kobi Mainu this season, Alejandro Garnacho. So if, if you're asking me what the system's like in 2024, I'm going to give you a far more positive answer than 2015. There's several reasons for that. One, facilities. So if you go back to 2019, I did a big interview with Ed Woodward for United We Stand. And I said, what on earth is going on? You've got coaches training in portable buildings. There's no floodlights for the younger teams at Carrington. The facilities for parents are not great. There's not even proper paths to the pitch. And Ed went, you know, how do you know this? You know, you're well informed. I said, it's my job to be well informed. And he said there was going to be a big review of the facilities. And what are the facilities? Carrington Training Ground, Littleton Road in Salford, the cliff in Salford, the famous cliff, the most productive pitch in world football. There's the Lee Sports Village, which isn't owned by Manchester United, but where the women's team, where the 21s often play. And there's also a smaller link up with Altrincham Football Club. So since then, Carrington's improved a lot. I go to a lot of training grounds. It's fantastic. It's not the best, but it's one of the best. And five years ago, it was looking a bit 20 years old, dated. And the people who've been there when it was opened in 2000 were like, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. Well, there was something wrong with it. It had fallen behind Tottenham's training ground, for example. But money's been spent. There's a £7 million academy building used by the women's team as well. That's opened. I spent 11 hours in it recently. It's really, really good. There are floodlights. There's a graduation centre for the parents to go in, get some food and drink. It's all complimentary before games. It's not perfect. There's not enough car parking at Carrington, for example but it's much better, money's been spent. And when I put pictures out six or seven months ago of that new building, 
there's just a wall of negativity from United fans. This is terrible. This looks like a school canteen. I'm sorry, I totally disagree. I think it's a really good facility. I also think that the youth system is in a, a much, much better place. Now, the man on the street only sees a tiny, tiny bit of it. The youth system, the academy, got 75 full-time employees. It's also got 150 casual staff, people like medics, even coach drivers. And Manchester United have to attract players from the age of seven. That's when you're first allowed to attract players. And then players can join at 12, 14, 16. Brexit has massively complicated the youth system. There will be no more Garnachos or Willy Cambalias because you're not allowed to. Because a player now needs a sufficient number of points to be allowed to join a youth system. The problem is the points total is that high that when a player gets that level of points, they want to be going into a first team environment and not a youth environment. And that's really sad because players like Gerard Piquet, Giuseppe Rossi, Garnacho, there's so many of them. They really mixed up the dressing rooms. Sir Alex Ferguson was so proud that when he was the first team manager, he looked at these boys from around the world. Not all of them could even speak English. And that was also happening at youth level. It cannot happen now, and that is sad. So there's more of a focus on British born talent, but that has meant that prices are driven up because there are only so many British potential Champions League class players, and there are more moneyed rivals. So United's reputation would have got players through the door years ago. In fact, players used to come to Manchester United Less so now. They've got options. They can go to Chelsea, who've thrown money at their youth system. Manchester City, who've thrown money at the youth system. Liverpool as well, because it's still the cheapest way to produce a player, bringing them through the ranks. And United's academy system, while it's been criticised for sales, it's profitable. £43 million of sales last year. Clearly profitable. This is an operation running on a figure about the same as one first team wage. A top first teamer granted and it's run really well in my opinion by Nick Cox and his staff changes have been needed diversity has been needed you got kids coming from South London who a few years ago might have looked at a profile of the coaches and thought they're all the same it's been mixed up now you hear a variety of accents you're a variety of people totally different skill sets former players people who know Manchester well because Manchester United, believe it or not, play in Manchester. People who are really good youth developers, people who are good in education. And it's no coincidence that the under 18s this season, for example, have been fantastic. And it's much improved. And have gone head to head with the biggest teams and beaten some of the biggest teams. And the 18s won the league in 23, 24. So it's much, much better. United have got to recruit cleanly. They've got to go in the front door of clubs. In a world and an industry where not everybody does that, inducements are illegal. I trust that Manchester United are doing it cleanly. I don't trust that other clubs are doing it cleanly. And I don't think they haven't done over the last decade as well. And some clubs have even been fined for not doing it cleanly. So I like the way United do it. I like the way that United uh, try and create a really enjoyable environment for young players. And I've seen it with my own eyes from seven years upwards. They know that the vast majority are not going to become established first teamers. But they also know that they can get a huge amount out of being in the academy, a good access to education, life changing experiences. You can travel the world as a youth team player. You can do absolutely loads. You're going to improve as a player and as a person. And the chances are, if you get to a certain level, you can have a good career in football as well. Those 18-year-olds, most of them, are going to be making a decent career as professional footballers. So, United have done a lot right and deserve credit for that. The system's far better resourced than it was back to 2015. The arrogance isn't there like it was. United are well-respected, got very good relationships with lots of clubs, big and small. And I think that is to their credit. It's never perfect. It's if you, if you stay still in that world, then you start falling behind very quickly. But United can look any youth system in the face now. And the facilities always need to be improving. Recruitment, you're always going to miss out on players. You know, when I see Cole Palmer doing well for Chelsea and realise that he was a Manchester United fan from Wivenshaw, of course that's frustrating. But every club's got a story like that. 
The thing is now that United have got to be in a good position to get them, to get them honestly. And what you've always got at this club, more than anything, more than anything, is a clear pathway to the first team. And that makes me proud as a Manchester United fan, historically and right now as well.